where his focus was. It says no, Savior attempted no civil reforms. He attacked no national abuses, nor condemned the national enemies. He did not interfere with the authority or administration of those in power. He who was our example kept aloof from earthly governments. Not because he was indifferent to the woes of men, but because the remedy, you see, Jesus wanted a solution. He wanted, the, no problem. The remedy did not lie in merely human and external measures. To be efficient, the cure must reach men individually and must regenerate the heart. That's the context. And to think that we would dare say that the interpretation of this Quote means don't say anything and don't do anything as it relates to the illegal behavior of a government. Police force. Don't say anything, don't do anything. Because Jesus didn't do that. I'm like, that has got to be one of the most ignorant statements. And brothers and sisters, the truth of the matter is, is I said it one time in my past. So I like when we have cameras and stuff, because I could, I could publicly apologize and acknowledge my error in quoting this quote out of context. Because what it means is that Leviticus 18 needs to be torn out of the Bible. Exodus 21 through 24 needs to be torn out of the Bible. Leviticus 19 needs to be torn out of the Bible. All of those quotes and those verses, the whole idea of the Seventh-day Adventist pioneers, many of them were abolitionists of slavery. Tear it out. All the quotes in the Southern works where the servant of the Lord makes it very clear that we are to protest against the bigotry that comes upon the colored race. Tear it out. If you actually believe that this quote is telling us, just don't say anything and just preach. Just don't say anything. Just go in people's neighborhoods and just serve. Brothers and sisters, we have to understand why God set up the kingdom of grace and what it was supposed to do and why God set up his minister. You know who God's minister is. You know who God's minister is? Oh, this afternoon we're going to talk about God's minister. Romans 13, 1 through 4. It's called the government. The Bible calls it God's minister. There's a reason God set his minister up. And we want to act like we're supposed to now replace the minister. You have to tear out pages from the Bible to believe that God wants us to be aloof to the atrocities that are taking place. That is not what this quote was talking about. Jesus had a focus when he did his ministry and there was no way governmental powers and civil reforms was gonna change what Jesus knew needed to be changed. That's what the quote is talking about. By no means was the quote saying we don't protest. By no means was the quote saying we are to stay hush hush when we are watching our brothers and sisters get slaughtered like animals. My brothers and sisters, after this study, as far as I'm concerned, you still hold that position. You just moved from the middle and you went far right. You are amongst the fanatics. To think that God would tell you to sit back and just do nothing and just pray. When you watch your people get slaughtered, when somebody takes your daughter and uses her for human trafficking, you just going you just going to pray. You go ahead and you pray. I'll be calling God's ministers to take care of those people. There is a balance to this, brothers and sisters. And this afternoon, we're going to get into a lot of the how. We're going to talk about what do we do? What is the role that gospel plays? What is the role that the law plays? When do we get involved? How do we get involved when we see atrocities taking place in our land? Because I'm telling you right now, if all you can do is just preach three angels, sit amongst yourselves and talk a whole bunch of SDA talk, and do it day after day, week after week, month after month, and year after year, you are thoroughly irrelevant. You are irrelevant. Live your life and die. Live your life and die. You are irrelevant. God needs a people that's going to be part of his problem solving. And there's no way in the world we're going to sit back and let this stuff continue.